Okay, time now to take a look at uh, some new research which has been carried out by Costa. It reveals uh, the way some of us think about our royal etiquette rules when it comes to food and drink. And although many of us are pretty happy with the way things are, one person is not. He's uh, the leading expert on etiquette. It's William Hansen who joins us now on the line. William, how are you today? I'm very well, Robin. Thank you for, so much for having me. So let's uh, talk about the latest uh, research then. It's something you're not happy about. Well, no, I'm not uh, I'm not shocked, really, if I'm honest, Robin. You only have to sort of uh, be as highly strung as I am and sort of sit in a restaurant or a cafe and look at how other people are eating to realise that maybe uh, etiquette is not what it once was, uh, as it were, perhaps in 1953 when we had the last coronation, for example. We've had a huge shift. But in everybody's defence, I think that is also because... How we eat as a as a nation and as a world has changed. Uh, we have so many different cuisines. We have so many different opportunities to eat, um, and we're very fortunate in that. And actually, thus maybe we're we're just in that sort of air zone where we're just finding our feet with with how to eat these new cuisines and in these new ways. A bit like when the mobile phone came in on the train and everyone shouted down it because they really weren't sure how to how to use it. Whereas now we've kind of as a society finessed that out. So we've discovered things like less than half of us hold cutlery in the right hand. Yes, no, I know, which which is which is quite staggering. And and the research by Costa Coffee, ahead of the launch of their new coronation chicken toasty, has shown that over seventy five percent of people don't quite know how to put their cutlery uh, together on the plate to show that they finished as a sort of a non verbal signal to clear my plate. So what about an event like uh, the coronation then? If you're invited to a big fancy event, what's the most important dining etiquette rules that you should follow then? Well, really, wait until everyone is, is served around you, it, depending on the style of uh, dining. If it's sort of banqueting style, like it would be at a wedding maybe, where you're on lots of different tables, you don't need to wait for the entire room to have their uh, beef in front of them or whatever they're eating. It's just on your table. And once everyone on your table has it, then you can start because the key thing to remember, and actually this is this this is the same anywhere in the world, is that dining is a communal experience. You are coming together to eat. It's a wonderful unifying thing, and so you don't just start eating the moment your food goes down in front of you. You wait for everyone around you to have their food. Now, what about uh, drinking tea or coffee? Is there a proper way to do that? Well, may I ask you, Rob? I hope this isn't a personal question, but when you're drinking from a teacup, do you extend your little finger or do you keep it tucked in? No, I actually keep it tucked in, but I've noticed a lot of ladies, when they're drinking, tend to extend their little pinky. Yes, well, this is unfortunate because when you when you look at the history on that, it sort of goes back to uh, to France in Louis the Fourteenth and Fifteenth time when extending the little finger was considered uh, a signal to show other members of the French aristocracy before they had the revolution uh, that you had a, and I'm going to sanitise this for you, a sexually transmitted disease. Uh, and tea was very expensive at the time. It was imported. Only the, the royal family and aristocracy could afford it. And as we may know from our French history, there was quite a lot of um, getting to know one another on an intimate level of an evening. And they were fairly indiscriminate with who they uh, got to know. And so there was a lot of sexually transmitted disease. And so the etiquette that was developed was that if you were drinking tea, and you were sort of flirting with someone across the hall, you would sort of make eye contact with them. And if you extended your little finger, you were giving a nonverbal signal that really only the two of you would see to let the other person know that, that you had that STD. And if they extended their finger back, fantastic, off we went, you can't get it twice. But if you didn't wish to, you know, you just sort of nodded politely and, and moved on. Then you had the staff of the houses sort of think, oh gosh, it must be so posh to stick your finger out. It must be the thing to do because it's what all the aristocracy are doing. But they didn't actually realise that it wasn't really anything to do with class. It was to do with syphilis. Wow, okay. I never knew that. Mm. Well, there we go. So I, I'm sorry to those ladies that you saw with their little fingers out. I'd get the debt all out and just wipe down their seat. <laughs> Now, I was in a restaurant the other day and we were presented with these uh, lovely linen napkins, uh, something that I haven't seen in a very long time. So I suppose uh, linen napkins, that's the way to go, not the old uh, paper ones. 
A paper napkin is better than nothing. You go to some people's houses, you go to certain certain restaurants, there's nothing. Um, and it's it's irritating, particularly if you are eating things like toasties or chicken goujons with your hands, for example, they're going to get greasy. You need something to do with the grease. And when you go to someone's house, if they don't give you a napkin, I'm always half tempted just to wipe it on their sofa because they've only got their, themselves to blame. Even a piece of kitchen roll is better than nothing. Now, what about uh, the royals themselves? Do you think they ever break the rules? Do you think they order in a takeaway on a Saturday night and have a munch at it while watching the TV? Yeah, I am. I am sure uh, some, you know, some takeaways have been uh, been delivered uh, to Kensington Palace, to Buckingham Palace over the years. Um, I, maybe not as frequently as they might be to yours or my houses. I don't know, but. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they relax uh, at points, but you can still relax and still be polite and nice to one another. Um, relaxing doesn't go hand in hand with sort of forgetting all grace. Well, if people want some more information, is there an etiquette rule book they can check out? Oh, well, I mean, there are there are thousands of etiquette rule books, some of which are, are behind me today as, as we speak. But you can head to my Instagram, for example, I pop tips on there or just go into your local Costa Coffee and have the Coronation Chicken uh, Toasty, but eat it nicely please. Exactly. And how will you be spending the coronation weekend then? Well, I am uh, I live in London and so I'm lucky enough to be able to sort of get in to the heart of the action and soak it all up. And uh, I'll be doing a bit of work, but I'll I'll just sort of watch things go by. And if I if I get just a, a glint of a crown go past, if I can just see one little sparkle off Queen Camilla or even the King, I'll, I'll be very happy. William, great talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Lovely. Thank you so much indeed, Robin.